What's up guys, thanks for watching another video and welcome back to the channel. If you know this channel, and you probably do because you're watching this, uh, we are huge Volvo fans and I particularly am because I love my V70R, which I'm standing next to here. But the problem is I've actually never driven one of its Swedish brethren, a Saab. Now I was tooled around in high school in Saabs for two years, a friend up the street used to drive me to high school, so I've been in them before, but I've never driven one. And that changes today. So what I'm standing in front of is a 9.3 convertible, and this is Kyle. Kyle has a new YouTube uh, channel called Kyle, Kyle Pansis, which That's is it. your name. That's my name. Um, and he actually reached out to me last September, and yep. this is my fault because we haven't had a chance to meet up. We're both North Jersey guys, and I have a Volvo, which you can't see off camera, and he has a Saab, so we thought it would I also be have a, a Volvo, by and, the way. Oh, that's right, you're a Volvo guy I too. I have a Volvo too. I completely forgot yeah, about that. I have it all. But you have the cousins, I, I the do cousins. not. But Kyle was nice enough to come out today and let me, or offer to let me drive his Saab, but there's a really interesting story behind it and that I think you guys are really gonna like. Yes. So we're gonna flip the camera around. I'm gonna let Kyle do a lot of the talking. I'll ask some questions because I think it's a story that you guys are really going to enjoy. So Kyle has the 9.3 convertible. Now, this is an interesting car because you rebuilt it. I did, in my driveway. So in your driveway. Now, why did you get a Saab 9.3 to rebuild in your driveway? It's a good question. So my family has always been into Saab since the early 2000s. And my father actually had this particular car model in a different color. In 2002, he purchased it. And uh, I also drove a 9.5 Saab for 10 years. I put 200,000 miles on the car. I modded. I modded everything on the car, I had rebuilt it, I replaced the transmission. So over the years, I became a very big Saab enthusiast and learned a lot about the platform. But this car is interesting because you haven't modded it. Correct. Now you bought this thing, was it junked? Was it totally destroyed? Is this a salvage title? What's the story behind it? So no salvage title. It, I bought it off Craigslist, uh, negotiated the guy down to a thousand bucks. The original engine was blown on it. So I purchased the car sight on scene with a friend he kind of like he's like yeah kyle you can do this so we went ahead and pursued the project or i pursued the project so why did you rebuild a blown engine sob to daily drive and you you've given this to your wife right yeah, my wife now at the time fiance was driving a 2000 ford uh taurus it was the mercury sable to be exact and it had 85,000 miles on it and it was still running okay it was just a beater so yeah you know we were it was about february march uh right after college and i knew how to rebuild and fix sobs and i said you know what now that we're out of school let's get rid of this car before it starts to become a problem and i don't really want to learn how to fix it so we went ahead and i shopped and that day i spotted this covered into some snow but the pictures overall looked really nice on it uh and fairly clean clean uh clean title on it so we went over there with a friend and a trailer picked it up when I purchased it the body had 130 so just about 31,000 miles since we put the put the engine in and a transmission by the way we ended up putting a transmission in it uh, so engine transmission combined has roughly 130,000 miles on it and this is the turbo this is a turbo all right so this is the 2 liter the 2.0 turbo correct 2.0 turbo produces about 210 horsepower stock all of the guts and core of this car is Saab, and that's what makes it a beautiful car. And as these things get older, that's what's gonna make them a little bit more special for the car enthusiast and Saab uh, collector. So you bought this car, as you told me off camera, in 2015, and obviously that was when the company, or after the company died. Uh, company died in 20, uh, 2009. They Bank were kind of around, back, yeah, they had this weird story from 20, 2009 to 2011, 2011 yeah. but this was purchased well after. So my question to you next is, where did you find parts? How difficult was it to find parts? You rebuilt the engine, you did the transmission. Was it hard to find parts for a car company or in a car that were totally defunct? So the answer in short guys is I've had zero issues finding any parts in the last four years with this car and previously with my other 9.5. The, this is a fun story. The engine comes from Goldwing Saab, which is a uh, Saab junkyard in the Northeast here in Syracuse, New York. Great guys, very helpful obviously Saab enthusiasts. The transmission I had shipped in from LA, from another Saab junkyard. My wife is from Chicago, and I happened to be in Chicago one spring day, that, you know, that spring of 2015, and located on the Saab farm, 
turbo because the turbo on the other engine obviously was shot. And so I picked up the turbo in Chicago. I met the gentleman there, kid, nice kid. Uh, flew home, that was a fun story. Flying home through security with the turbo in my bag. It was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that's kind of like the engine guts in the bay. All of the, trans um, all of the components for the suspension. I did the shocks, I did all the bushings. I use Euro, uh, Europarts.com, uh, a couple other websites out there that have um, parts, no problem. All right, so Kyle is going to pop the hood and we are going to check out this beastly two liter turbo. It is a beast. <laughs> there Look it is. at that, there she, there she blows. There she blows. Down here is the turbo, obviously your turbo inlet. So the turbo towards the front here yeah, in these cars. It's switched from Volvo. That's interesting. Volvo's on the back side. Yeah, Volvo's which are sucks. back there, which is the worst humanly possible placement for a turbo. Yeah, it doesn't cool, this it's is, hard to get to. This is nice because you can actually get to it. That's yeah. cool. There's one downside to this, which these engine are these engines are really known to having, uh, is a sludging issue. Um, what happens is over time is the oil sludges up clogs the sump pump and it will blow the engine. So a couple things come into effect on that. Obviously if your breather valve system isn't working properly, the crank pressure builds and that causes the sludge. Number two, the, uh, the other thing is oil. If you're not using synthetic oil, the regular oil or semi-synthetic will sludge. Obviously there was a huge recall back in 2005 or four when they kept running into the problem. Uh, those two things will cause sludging. The other thing that happens, the one downside to the front turbo mount is that the downpipe and exhaust runs right underneath the oil pan. So obviously you can imagine how hot that oil gets when you're running this thing hot, especially in the summer months with the air conditioning. Uh, you know, it can start to boil that oil, which is what also can cause the sludging. But other than that, if you, mount, if you manage it and you maintain it and you change the oil every 5,000 miles using 5W30 synthetic oil, which is what I've used for the last 15 years driving Saab. Shouldn't have a problem. Cool. So we have gone over this car. It's a really interesting build because as we said, it was, you know, blown engine, needed a new trans, but turbo. Tur and turbo yeah. and everything that you've done to it to make it really kind of a competent daily driver. But uh, can I have a go? Yeah. All right. First time I'm ever driving a Saab, Volvo guy, drives a sob for the first time. I think that's a good video title. I think so too. So, all right, and let's true. hop in. That's right, that's true actually. So let's hop in, let's strap the GoPros in and let's take this Swedish cousin for a drive. All right, pulling out in the sob. If you want uh, if you want to put it in sport mode, we hit that little S button. I mean, button. absolutely sport mode. All right. Am go. I in sport mode yep. now? It says it right It says there. it on the dash. We're ready to roll. All right. Let's do it. So off the bat. Noticing that the cameras are shaking a lot. <laughs> that's a cork of the. That's oh, another cork we forgot to mention is the <laughs> shakiness of the car. Hear that little turbo action. Yeah, there. so feeling the turbo, hearing the turbo. Yeah. We're at 50 miles an hour. Yep. Let's. There's no one behind us. Okay. And a little bit of car in front of us, so let's go down to about 35. Okay. And we'll punch it a little bit. Okay. Not bad. That's pretty. That's pretty, pretty good. damn good. It's pretty good wow. for 17 years old. I'm, I'm legitimately surprised at that. Yeah. That's got some pull to it. It's got good pull. And, I mean, and you even like you can't do it right here, but when you're on the highway, right? You know, if you're doing 70 and you want to get it to, I don't know, 100, right? It's, it's quick. Doing passing. So yeah, this is a this is an interesting experience because the car is definitely smaller than the V70R. Yes. And of course, I have to make comparisons to that because that's my like performance car and I do daily that a little bit. Okay. So this is a this is an interesting kind of uh, feeling. Now going back to the performance about this, you said 210 horsepower, two liter turbo. You know, 210 horsepower in this, you know, in this car, it definitely feels like enough. Yeah. I was well, honestly yeah. worried coming into this, thinking that it wouldn't be enough. It, it's, uh, it's, it's really amazing. Like if anybody follows Sobs at all, they came out with the Vigan and the Vigan actually used the nine, the 9.5 engine. They use, they put the 2.3 engine, 2.3 right. liter engine in this car, and to engineer this car to handle that kind of power of the time that this car was built was an engineering uh, coup, I guess. Right. Well, I mean, it was and that amazing. Had 250 horsepower. Yeah. So yeah. That's. I mean, it's it, a lot of power. Even by modern standards for a front wheel drive car, it's that's still, a lot of power. Yeah. Because I mean, even the what, the Civic Type R. 
Yeah. Probably the one of the best, if not the best, front wheel drive car made right now. 300 horsepower. Yep. So you're only talking about a tune and an intake in the 93 Vigan and you're at Civic Tech okay, power. Right. And then that's and interesting. It, and for this car to get up to let's say 275 is it doesn't take much, which 275 in this is a lot of yeah. power, like we just said. Yeah. But all I need is a cat back exhaust intake and a tune that's stage one at uh, at 275. The car feels really nice to cruise in. Yes. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. The seats are a little stiff. Um, for me, but that's just because I'm coming from a V70R is basically is a giant you. couch. Yeah, they hug you. Um, those seats are stupid amazing. comfortable. Amazing, yeah. Uh, and they're just super cushy. Um, lumbar support's good. Bumper. Seats otherwise bolstering's kind of nice. It's not like, I feel like I'll slide a lot, but for cruising, I could, I could cruise in this all day long, be very comfortable. Um, automatic, obviously. I feel like the automatic's actually quite smooth for the age of the car. I don't feel like it's uh, great. great. It's quirky. It's not. There's not a ton of hesitation. Like we're coming up to a red light, but you put your foot down, changes down really nice, yeah. really quick. Um, power comes on really nice and low. Uh, the turbo is. It's, it's a lot of low range torque, yeah. which I was actually interested in more of the mid range torque of the car because, as we all know, if you have. Watch Top Gear. Watch Top Gear, and you've seen the Clarkson clip from many years ago. <laughs> he found out that. You know the the sobs are really really punchy in the mid range, so that's what I was interested in. But I'm a little surprised that it has so much torque down low, even with uh, you know with a, a smaller ish turbo. I love the uh, I love the gauge cluster honestly because you get your, your smaller tack speed in the middle, but you get this thing that says turbo, turbo on the right hand side, and it says oh there's a little turbo, there's a medium turbo, red, red, you're having a lot of turbo, which I think is hilarious, <laughs> I think that's cool, and then the fuel gauge, it's just a fuel gauge, but it's kind of quirky looking, I really like it, um, I don't know, it just it's a nice lead out dash, they have good wood here, yep. uh, I love these vents, they're so weird in the best way possible, I love that, it's just, <laughs> no one makes a vent like that, which is super great, like everything works. For a 17 year old car, I mean, definitely not everything works in my Volvo for sure. <laughs> and it's younger it's, than this. So. It's, it's, I mean, it's a process. As I'm any, sure. Everybody knows it's a never ending. It really is. Never ending yeah. sob story. <laughs> <laughs> well played. All right, so here we go. A little bit of twisties. Yeah, you'll feel the body. You'll feel the body roll? <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll feel it. Oh, geez. Brakes are a little squishy. Yep but that is to be expected on a non-performance car. How do you like that exhaust? It, look, it sounds good, honestly. Got a little bit. Woo. I feel the body roll, yep. but it's not like, it's not unmanageable. No. Car's fun. Yeah, I like this. Okay, I can own a Saab. This is good. These things are dirt cheap. Yes. You can find them for next to nothing. Yep. You bought this for a thousand bucks. Yep. And I, I mean, it's- After the build and I had sold the old car, it cost me only a thousand bucks. I mean, that's ridiculous, but in emotional value, yes. it's priceless. Priceless. So Never getting rid of it. That, there you go. I mean, there. That, that's it in a nutshell. It's like the same thing with me and the, and the V70R. Never, Never getting rid of it. it. I love it. There's a reason I sold the Aston, not that. Same thing with you in this car. Yep. Or Sobs in general, in I guess you could say. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, awesome. So that will do it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of not only your car, but now Sobs in general, and especially this one, because it's such a unique story of buying a car for a thousand bucks. Thousand bucks. Putting a new engine in it, putting a new tranny in it, and now it's your daily, and it's been reliable, and it yeah. kind of proves the story that you don't really need a new car. Right. You can kind of just go out and get a used one. If you have a little bit of know-how, you can do it. You can do it. And here, right here, proof, proof, proof positive <laughs> from this guy and this car. So uh, thank you so much, Kyle, for letting me drive your car. Uh, we're going to meet again, and he is going to drive the V70R because we did just did a little bit uh, around the neighborhood, and his mind is sufficiently blown. Unbelievable. So we're going to get that on camera as well. Yes. We'll put that on both of our channels, and it's going to be really cool. But for now, uh, yeah, I'm totally sold, and I want to sob. So thank you for ruining my bank account again. I well, appreciate that. Well, I'll help you out with that. All right. All right we'll collab. All and right. So, so subscribe to his channel if you yes. haven't already, and yes. if you haven't subscribed to mine, 
check it out. We appreciate Absolutely. your support, as we mentioned earlier, so thank you guys. That will do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I and Kyle, we'll see you next time. Later. Bye, guys.